All right, so you're thinking of buying an iPad and you realize that there are a lot of great options, but also some things that you need to watch out for. If that's super confusing, don't worry, you're not alone. And spoiler alert, I'm actually gonna add one iPad to this list, which I think a lot of people are overlooking and they're making a huge mistake. So let's talk about the important differences. This way you can have all the information that you need to choose the right iPad for you. I'm also going to go over the configuration options to help you narrow it down. Starting out, we have the iPad that got the most significant changes in this lineup, the iPad 10. In the US, it sells for 449 and if you're familiar with the iPad 8 or the iPad 9, you'll immediately notice the new design. We no longer have the larger bezels on the top and the bottom, and we're getting rounded corners, squared off edges, and it comes in some more fun colors. I, I absolutely love this pink. It's exactly how I hoped it would look in real life. We're getting four speaker grills, but only two speakers, one on each side. And this is a major improvement over the previous models, which only had speakers on one side. With this new design, if you hold the iPad 10 in landscape mode, you're getting audio from both sides, which is great for watching movies and when you're playing games where you need to detect where sounds are coming from. For biometric authentication, we're getting a fingerprint sensor that's built right into the power button. The charging port was upgraded to USB-C, so we have support for more powerful accessories. But when it comes to the Apple Pencil compatibility, it's still only compatible with the first generation pencil, which charges via lightning. So now you need a USB-C to lightning adapter in order to charge and pair the Apple Pencil. And you can't store the pencil on the side of the iPad. Speaking of accessories, Apple developed a Magic Keyboard Folio specifically for the iPad 10. It has excellent keys, they're great to type on, and the trackpad is right up there with the regular Magic Keyboard as the best trackpads on any keyboard case. And I love the fact that you can remove the keyboard while still protecting the back if you want to use the iPad in tablet mode, or you can flip the keyboard and then reattach it so that when you fold it behind the display, you're not pressing the keys. Keep in mind that there's no protection for the sides or the corners, and it sells for $249, which is kind of an expensive accessory for an entry-level iPad. The iPad 10 provides plenty of performance with the A14 Bionic chip and four gigabytes of RAM. We're seeing impressive single and multi-core scores, as well as improved GPU performance when compared with the previous model. And even with this entry-level iPad, I've been able to play all of my typical games, even the most demanding ones. As far as productivity, you're getting pretty much every available iPad OS feature with split view, slide over windows, and all the new multitasking features in iPad OS. It works with sidecar, universal control, and really the only thing missing is stage manager, which I don't really find to be a big deal, except for one reason, which I'll get to in a minute. The display was also upgraded to a 10.9 inch liquid retina sRGB display. It's very good for the price range, but it's not fully laminated. And we'll see how it compares with the rest of the model in just a moment. The iPad 10 supports Wi-Fi 6, and like all the other four current models, the cellular version supports 5G. Finally, I'll talk about the cameras towards the end of the video because it's easier to look at them side by side. The one thing that I want to mention now is that this is the only iPad where the front-facing camera is on the long edge. So this way, you're perfectly centered when you're on a video call and you're using a stand or a case. With the rest of the iPads, the camera is on the short edge and it looks like you're way off to the side and you're looking off screen. As far as configuration, we're looking at either 64 gigabytes or 256 gigabytes, which is kind of frustrating in 2023. 64 gigs can work if you don't play a lot of big games, you don't store image and video files on your device, and you mostly use it to surf the web, go on social media sites, and stream content. Keep in mind that iPad OS and system data currently take up 12 gigs on my iPad. If you want to go to 256 gigs, that's another $150, which is quite a jump. Next, we have the smallest iPad, the iPad mini 6, which starts out at 499 bucks. Has a similar design to the iPad 10. So again, we're getting four speaker grills, but two speakers, one on each side. There's a USB-C for charging and accessories. And this iPad is compatible with the second generation Apple Pencil, which pairs and charges on the side of the iPad. In terms of user experience, I definitely prefer the second generation Pencil to the first. And if you want to learn more about that, check out this video. 
Now, of course, when you're writing or drawing on the iPad Mini 6, you're working with a much smaller canvas, so keep that in mind. The screen is 8.3 inches. Again, it's liquid retina, but instead of sRGB, it's a P3 display, which is a wider color gamut and it's more color accurate. It also has an anti-reflective coating, which is nice if you plan on using this iPad outside or in areas where you have to deal with bright lights. Now, unlike the iPad 10, this display is fully laminated. So there's no air gap and the display, the touch layer and the cover glass are fused into a single display assembly. This means that the image looks like it's right on top of the glass. And when you're using the Apple Pencil, the tip of the pencil will look like it's touching the content that's being created. With the iPad 10, for example, you'll be able to see separation, especially if you look at an angle. We have Touch ID incorporated into the power button. And as far as performance, we're getting a bump over the iPad 10 with the A15 Bionic, but still four gigs of RAM. The single and multi-core performance improvements are not really something that the majority of users are going to notice, but it's always great to have additional performance headroom as the device gets older. Now, in terms of handling, I absolutely love this device. It's super fun to game on, especially if you have small hands and it's incredibly portable. As far as configuration options, we have the same choices that we have with the iPad 10. So that's 64 or 256 gigs. When it comes to typing, there's really no great keyboard case for the iPad mini six because the keyboard would be too small. So you're pretty much looking at an external keyboard. Now, regardless of which iPad you get, I absolutely recommend that you protect it with a case. And this year, case device sent over their 360 all run protection for iPads and MacBooks. You might think of case Defy as a phone case company because of their super popular phone cases, but now they protect your other devices. For the iPad, the Ultra Impact Folio case has EcoShock together with an all new corner design to help the iPad withstand drops from up to four feet. Super important, the entire iPad is covered, so there are no exposed sides or corners. The case also features an adjustable horizontal stand so you can easily adjust your viewing angle. And to round things off, it has a durable and thin tempered glass screen protector to prevent cracks and scratches while maintaining a sleek and slim design. If you own a MacBook, the Impact MacBook case has a super protective hard shell, an impact resistant corner design with EcoShock absorption tech on the bracket lining, and rubberized anti-slip grips to ensure stability stability and a good typing experience. The removable and reusable MacBook screen protector not only protects your display, it also filters out blue light waves to prevent digital eye strain and it protects your privacy when viewed from the side. So if you want peace of mind knowing that your iPad and MacBooks are safe, go to casetify.com slash techgeartalk. You'll automatically get 15% off your purchase. And thank you to Casetify for sponsoring this portion of the video. All right, so now we're getting to the higher end iPads and this is where there can be some confusing overlap. So first we have the iPad Air 5, which sells for 599 for the 64 gigabytes version or 749 for 256. We're getting a 10.9 inch display, which is essentially the same size as the iPad 10, but it's a P3 display with an anti-reflective coating like the iPad mini six, and it's also fully laminated. Once again, we're getting four speaker grills, but two speakers, and these are noticeably better than the iPad 10 and the iPad mini six. We're seeing a more powerful USB-C port with support for higher data transfer speeds and more powerful displays. And just like the previous two iPads on this lineup, it has touch ID incorporated into the power button. For accessories, the iPad Air 5 is compatible with the newer second generation Apple Pencil, and it's also compatible with the smaller Magic Keyboard. This keyboard has fantastic keys, an excellent trackpad, and it offers a USB-C port for charging the iPad Air, which leaves your iPad port free for other accessories. Now looking at performance, we're getting another significant improvement with the M1 chip and eight gigabytes of RAM. This is the same powerful chip that we saw on the M1 MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, and Mac Mini. So that's really impressive for a tablet. You have all the multitasking features of the previous iPads, but you also have center stage. Now I don't really use the majority of the features in center stage on the iPad itself, but it lets you mirror your iPad to an external display without black bars on the left and the right. That's something that's not possible on the previously mentioned iPads. You can also extend your display and use the external display as a second monitor. So you can actually move apps and windows and then get a true two 
display setup, which helps you be more productive. And that brings me to the two iPad Pro models, which have some similarities, but they also have some really important differences. So on the smaller version, we're getting an 11 inch display, which is slightly larger than the iPad 10 and the iPad Air 5. But more important, it's a ProMotion display, which is Apple's adaptive refresh rate. The other iPads on this list, other than the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, have a constant 60 hertz refresh rate. But the iPad Pro automatically adjusts in real time based on what you're doing. So if you're reading or looking at static content, then it can reduce the refresh rate to 24 hertz and save on battery life. But if you're opening or closing apps, if you're scrolling through a website or gaming or performing any other tasks where smoother motion would improve the user experience, then the display can bump the refresh rate up to 120 hertz. Now around the edge, we see four speaker grills, but now we're actually getting four speakers. In addition to sounding fuller and having more presence than the previous models, they also respond to the orientation of the iPad and they provide much more of a surround sound feel. The USB-C port is now Thunderbolt slash USB 4 with even faster data transfer speeds, which can be useful if you're transferring large video or photo files. We've got second generation Apple Pencil compatibility with the new hover functionality, which gives you an indicator of the position of the pencil when it's hovering over the display. And it also interacts with different UI elements. The 11 inch iPad Pro uses the same magic keyboard as the iPad Air 5, which comes in white and black. For biometric authentication, instead of Touch ID, we have Face ID with a true depth front facing camera. And I really like the fact that I can just pick up my iPad, swipe up and start using it. Now, as far as configuration, we're seeing a lot more options and it starts out at 128 gigabytes for 799, then goes all the way up to two terabytes. Now, I really like the 128 gig option, especially for users who are considering the iPad Air 5 and just need a bit more than 64 gigabytes. This way you're getting all the upgrades of the iPad Pro for only $50 more. As far as performance, you're getting the most powerful chip in any tablet, the M2. And every model up to 512 gigabytes of storage comes with eight gigs of RAM, while the one and two terabyte versions come with 16 gigs. In addition to the improved camera system, we're also getting a LiDAR scanner. So if that's something that you need for your workflow, it's absolutely a reason to get an iPad Pro. And that brings us to the biggest iPad, the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. It doesn't just have the largest display, it has the absolute best display on any iPad. It's a liquid retina XDR display, which is powered by mini LEDs. And this is not just a distinction that you're gonna see in the spec sheet. You will absolutely notice it when you use it, especially when viewing HDR content. It's the brightest iPad for SDR content at 600 nits. And for HDR, we're looking at 1000 nits max full screen brightness and 1600 nits peak brightness. Again, we're getting four speakers and these are the best speakers on any iPad. So if you actually plan on using them and you're looking for the best quality, this is the way to go. Of course, it uses the second generation Apple Pencil, it's compatible with a larger Magic Keyboard, and as with all the iPads, there are great options from third-party manufacturers. Again, we're getting the powerful M2 chip with either eight or 16 gigs of RAM, and we have the same configuration options, starting with 128 gigs for 1099. Now, before I get to the iPad that a lot of people skip, let's quickly talk about the camera systems. So all the current iPads have a 12 megapixel ultra-wide front-facing camera with with center stage. That's a feature that uses AI to identify and track a subject as it moves through the frame. And it really gives your video calls a more dynamic feel. As far as the rear facing cameras, I mostly use those cameras to scan documents because I always have my phone with me to take pictures and shoot video. So while the iPad Pro absolutely has the most advanced camera system, that isn't really a reason for me to upgrade. Now, if you plan on creating content with it, or as I mentioned earlier, if you need a LiDAR scanner, that's another story. But now I wanna talk about the iPad 9. It's true that it doesn't have all the bells and whistles of the more expensive iPads, but let's look at value. On the Apple Store, it's listed for $329, but just like the rest of the iPads, you'll find better prices by using the links in the description. You can usually find this one for under $270. If we're comparing it with the iPad 10, we're getting a slightly smaller display with larger bezels on the top and the bottom, the old style home button with Touch ID versus the new implementation. Both speakers are on one side, but you do get a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which no other iPad on this list has. The port is lightning, which actually matches 
matches up with the first generation Apple Pencil, and the chip is the A13 Bionic, which is one generation older. It's still able to power my more demanding games, and like every iPad on this list, you can pair a controller, stream games, and essentially use the iPad as a display. So if you're buying a first iPad for a kid, or you just need something around the kitchen for watching videos or for looking up recipes, I think that the iPad 9 is an excellent option. Now you should check out this comparison. Click on my face to subscribe. You know what I always say, buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon.